Hey, it's Aaron, the Metal Theologian. I hope this is working. It's the first video of the new phone, so, um, yeah, I hope I don't fuck this up. Especially because I have this fucking mustache. See, y'all think I'm, like, wasting my time when I don't make videos for a couple weeks, like, when I'm sort of biding my time in that, but look, I fucking make it worthwhile to come back, right? That's not going to last long, I'll tell you. And anyway, I haven't seen anything out of Davis Winchester for a while, but I was growing this mustache in solidarity with him. Um, so I hope he still has his mustache. You know, I, I do shit like this at work too, actually. Like, more than once at work, I'll be like, hey, everyone's got to grow a mustache and, like, work really hard on it. Well, one year I did that. Maybe, I think it was two years ago or something like that. And there was, um... Like, a couple of people who played along, but there was one dude in particular who grew a mustache and, like, kept it. And, like, I was getting sick to fucking death of mine, right? Because, like, it itches. And, like, when you're eating, like, fried chicken, which is something you do a lot in the South, then uh, it's kind of gross and shit. So, you know, I only do it once in a while because it's funny. Um, so, um, yeah, so anyway, uh, I, I was ready to get rid of mine. So I went up to him at work one day and I was like, hey, listen, man. You know, I appreciate you playing along, but I can't take it anymore. Since things didn't go, I feel like, you know, it's like the Christian thing to do to tell you that, like, you know, <laughs> I don't, because I don't leave you out here with your dick in your hand, you know. But he was like, oh, no, that's cool. And he actually kept it for a while. He, like, outlasted me. It was my own fucking game. So, hats off. I'd, like, say his name and shit, but I wouldn't want to embarrass the guy, so. So, sort of uh, for Vinyl Richie here, lest uh, he be concerned that his shit never take. I finally broke down and I uh, got something by Nod. Now, this is sort of part of a, uh, I kind of recently discovered, like, stoner doom shit, and by way of it, like, the whole world of, like, the newer sort of stoner metal, kind of that sort of nexus, not sort of straight metal, but, like, sort of what that's become, has become really appealing to me, and, like, finding new records has been really exciting. And it's kind of fucked up, because in a way I've stayed away from that shit, because I knew I'd get into it, you know? I didn't want to... I figured there are enough things that I collect. But I kind of went crazy with this shit. So I was looking for anything that was, like, recent, I actually found this marked down. And I remember that, uh, Mr. Vinyl Richie has talked about Nod many times, and although I never... <laughs> I, I, I don't remember what he said about them ever, except that he liked them. Uh, I was like, well, what the hell, I'll give it a shot. And this fucking record is great. Like, it gets better with each listen and shit. And this is my first exposure. I, this could be their best record. It could be their worst record. I have no idea. Because I don't know anything. Look, I didn't even bother to look at the download code. Yeah. Fuck, if someone wants it, go for it. I'm not going to use it. I'm too much of an anal collector to get rid of the card, you know? But yeah, um... In a way, this reminds me of early Killing Joke, but like the way I always want Killing Joke to sound without like sort of the wimpier Killing Joke minutes or bits. Because I mean, let's face it, Love Like Blood kind of sucked, you know. Fuck, man, that show is so lame compared to ah, uh, whatever. I'm not gonna go on a thing about bad Killing Joke because I love Killing Joke. I think I'll probably know that anyway. Anyway, Nod's awesome. Yeah, I, find, I gambled on this thing, too. I found this marked down as well. And, like, it's not like... This is actually my only COC album now, but it's not like I've never had anything before, you know what I mean? I used to have a copy of an eye for an eye and shit. And it never really did a whole shit ton for me. And I sort of heard that they had gone in a really different direction over the last, like... I mean, probably 20 years now, anyway. But, uh, you know, I'd seen the name come up a lot in conjunction with, like, sludge metal and stoner metal and doom and whatever this shit is because it seems like there are 10,000 different names for the same thing but maybe that's my ignorance yeah anyway it's a pretty fucking good record this thing it's um you know I don't know if I'd really call this like a doom record although if I'm calling like trouble doom then this is probably as doomy as that you know what I mean it doesn't play by um, sort of the rules, though, like in terms of like the guitar sound specifically and things like that. Like you can, t it's they don't sound like Fu Manchu, you know what I mean? They don't have that like old sort of guitar uh, tone and shit. But um, but you know from the songwriting construction here, and there's a lot to really be interested in. So I'm pretty into this new COC. 
Like, I almost want to work my way backwards a little bit. We'll see, you know, I might just, you know, not look the gift horse in the mouth, since I never thought I'd get so into a COC record, you know? I don't think I've ever owned Animosity. But, um, I definitely had an eye for it. I, I think I had Technocracy on CD once upon a time, too. So, you know, it's early stuff. I mean, it's kind of a completely different band, all intents and purposes. Hey, here's one I've shown before, too, actually. I, I've, me I've mentioned this once or twice as a record that, like, I just kind of couldn't get my head around, you know? It just seemed, like, really kind of not great. But this Electric Wizard record is fucking fantastic. And uh, I feel like a dick saying don't ever sell shit, especially because I'm actually selling off a little bit of Prague shit right now. Um, <laughs> only a little bit. But, um, yeah, this fucking um, Electric Wizard Let Us Pray record, it's been sitting in my collection. I mean, literally, I'm pretty sure we're still living in San Francisco when I bought this. And I left the city of San Francisco in 2008 and moved to the East Bay. Um, so if that's the case, I've had this thing for at least, like, 12 years. And it's one of those that I pull out, like, once a year and go, yeah, I kind of like what they're doing, but it's just kind of forgettable and, like, not all that interesting to me. And, like, the last few days I've been like, god damn, this is awesome, you know? So yeah, hats off to Electric Wizard. I'm keeping an eye out for more, you know? Yeah, fucking Orange Goblin, too. I think I talked about these guys. You know, the first time I ever heard about either of these bands, I heard about both of them together as, like, this sort of new, like, kind of stoner rock thing. It was, like, back in the 90s, you know? And there was, like, Fu Manchu was the first one I heard of, and then I heard of Electric Wizard and Orange Goblin. And both those names are so mind-blowing that, like, they sort of fused in my head. So it's hard for me to think about the one without the other. But speaking of Orange Goblin, um, I just grabbed this one the other day, but check this shit out. I am often pretty quick to shit on covers on, uh, not like jackets, like, that are, I mean, I'll, what do I need to say, right? But um, w when people do cover songs, I tend to shit on them, you know what I mean? I'm dismissive and shit. I talk a lot of shit. Well, I'll tell you something. This record right here, the fucking song We Bite... Which, I'll tell you something, if I were in a band, I wouldn't have the balls to do a cover. I mean, now I probably wouldn't know that someone else beat me to it, right? But, like, there's something kind of bold about choosing that song. I mean, I can play that song as well as Doyle can. And I, I, I can't play guitar, right? I mean, it's one of the most simple things ever fucking written. And, um, yeah, there's kind of a... Anyway, it, it fits on the album really well. Like, it doesn't break the vibe, even though it's not exactly as sludgy, from a, you know, uh, the, as far as how fast it is and shit like that, you know what I mean? Definitely has some pace to it. And yeah, this fucking record's just great across the board, man. So what else are we going to talk about? Hey, you know something? Here's one that I'm still working on, okay? It's kind of interesting. I didn't know what I was going to say about this shit, but it's kind of flowing organically, so... Right on. Yeah, Cathedral. I got this when I was in a death metal, actually. When I was on that big kick. I was kind of grabbing the earache shit that I came across. And um, this was a band that I thought I might now appreciate, now that I was more in death metal, since they, um... You know, even though Cathedral was, you know, like, one of the doom bands of the era that was sort of the backdrop that they were working against, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, this record still kind of leaves me cold, man. I just don't like it. It's just too, uh, and it's not too slow for me because I really like, like, Moss, and, um, oh, there's another one I've been listening to a lot. Well, I can totally hang with Pelican, you know, and I mean, that's pretty... Oh, but even Sun I'm starting to like, man, and they're like the ultimate when it comes to that kind of shit. So it's not that it's too dirgy. It's just, uh, I don't know, it doesn't hit me right. In fact, you know what the, the truth is of this record? And this is really weird, I kind of hope I get past it. It's only because that cover is so amazing, I keep looking at it, you know? Um, you know, one thing, uh, it's been a while since I've talked about it, I think, but I have like this weird relationship with Ben Mountain. Because like, I actually, I, I really like Mountain. But like, there's something about Mountain, re the first couple of Mountain records just like fucks with me emotionally. And I really don't know what it is, but, like, anytime I... If I put on a mountain record, like, if I put on outside of Avalanche, by the time it gets to the end of the side, I'll be kind of depressed. 
I don't know what it is. It's just weird. And like, I know it's happening. I, and I watched for it. And I'll be like, yeah, I'm not going to listen to Mountain again for a while. So anyway, so Cathedral, this Cathedral record is like halfway between um, where, you, you know, it's, it's okay, but it just doesn't blow my mind. And there's something about that kind of messes me up. You know what I mean? So um, I'm not going to go that far with it. And I want to listen to this a few more times first anyway, because there, there's clearly something going on here that I haven't connected to yet, you know? So uh, I want to figure that shit out. But yeah, Cathedral. Yeah, let me hype a lesser band here too, or a lesser known one here. I came across this one basically by accident because it was cheap. It's one of those things you sort of tacked on with an order, right? It's this band called Zoroaster. Called Dog Magic. And aside from the fact that really this cover is worth the price of the album, you know, it's uh, it's just awesome, and it's really it's um. It doesn't go anywhere near Black Doom, you know what I mean? But it, um, the vocals are kind of screamy, sort of like Baroness, really, you know? Where um, it's sort of that abrasive thing, which isn't quite so much what I associate with the Doom. That tends to be, well, when, when Doom was really becoming its own big thing, I would, that was one of the things that really always put me off of uh, Doom bands. If they had like black metal style vocals, they'd really lose me pretty fast. So these guys have a little bit of that going on, but it's not like that, and it doesn't lose me like it used to that anyway, but but it, it heads a little bit in that direction, but just the songs are good, man. Like for like doomy, slow-ass fucking eight-minute tunes. This is some top-notch writing here, you know? Yeah, since I mentioned Fu Manchu, actually. You know, I used to have this one on CD. And um, I haven't actually owned a copy in kind of a long time until pretty recently. And it's funny because the day I got this, I had the riff from the first song, Regal Beagle, in my head. And like I was in the car, like singing it and shit like that. And I couldn't figure out what the song was. So then I was like, okay, well, I wanted to grab that Fu Manchu record. So I did that. I went home and put it on and there it was. I was like, oh, well, shit. I guess my like subconscious made the connection before I actually like listened to the record, you know. But, uh, but it's great. Um... Fu Manchu has something about it. In this kind of music, it seems like the bands that I tend to gravitate towards are when the singers are a little more charismatic and sort of out front. Like Messiah Marcolin from, or Marcolin or whatever, however you pronounce it, from uh, Candlemass is like perfect for that reason because he has like a real like no shit voice and he's in the front, you know what I mean? And it matches what's going on, right? It seems like a lot of the bands, like the vocals kind of fade more into the background and like, um... I would almost use Witchfinder General as a case in point for that sort of thing because, uh, but Zeb has a pretty distinctive voice, even though it's sort of balanced a little more equally. You know what I mean? With a band like Fu Manchu, it really feels like it's in the background, like almost like an afterthought, and that was something that um, made it a little bit harder for me to get into this stuff. But man, I love this fucking record. And um, there's at least one other band here that kind of has that same thing going on. Yeah, like fucking Yob, man. Like, I listen to this record, and I, I listen to this like two or three times before I realized they even had a fucking singer. <laughs> okay, that's maybe it's a little bit of an exaggeration, but, uh, you know, I, but I was into this one for this sort of long, sort of sprawling, you know, doomy aspect, sort of like the Pelican shit in a way, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, this is my first Yob record, and I'm really into it. I fucking love it. I've been hearing people say great shit about this whole, like, subgenre too, you know? In fact, you know what's funny? As in talking about this, I've kind of given credit to Bananas for, like, turning me on to it. Because, you know, with Grown Man Record Night, I always associated, like... Um, okay, so, like, that Les McCann record, that live one that's Bananas' favorite record, like, of all time, that's, like, the ultimate Grown Man Record Night record, because it's, um, it's, like, you know, it keeps the party going, you know what I mean? It has a lot of groove, and it's soulful, but it's on the other side of where I would start thinking that I've crossed the corny line, if 
that makes sense. You know what I mean? There are parts of that record that are just like totally fucking great. And there are parts that are kind of corny. You know what I mean? And Bananas, I don't know, is less hung up about that kind of shit, about being cool and shit or whatever than I am. So he doesn't give a fuck. He just plays it. So I associate that kind of music with Grown Man Record Night. And it wasn't really until maybe a year or two ago that I sort of like made the connection with what a stoner rocker Bananas is too, right? So I've been asking him for tips and shit and kind of giving the credit to him because he played the Oma uh, record that got me started on this path, right? But he's like probably the fifth person I've known who's been really into this shit. So it's just funny how that works out. Like Doom Paul, who makes videos on here, like I was hanging out with him when he was freaking out over this shit. He's why I saw like Graves at Sea and uh, some of these other bands and shit, you know? But, um. Of course, I reach back out to him too, right? But, um. The, uh. Like, the, the getting uh, onto this kick could have been triggered at any number of different points, right? That just happens to be the one where Bananas was kind of exerting the, the uh, influence. Without necessarily even meaning to so much. Anyway, yeah, this Nod record is fucking... Yeah, I don't know, it's really good, man. I was starting to say it slaps. But first of all, I'm a little old for that expression. Second of all, it kind of doesn't slap. It's good. Speaking of shit that's good that doesn't slap. Actually, I think this record slaps. I've said this before, I'll say it again. If this were um, some obscure band on a private label, this would be a fucking classic. Like, this would be one of those legendary records like Diamond Head. You know what I mean? Um... You know, if it had been like a 500 run, it would be a $700 record. No shit. But since it's Black Sabbath and it's on a label and they're all names, I mean, they even got Ian Gillen, so it's like they lost their names to get another name, you know? Yeah, even with all that shit, though, like, people talk about the cover. I think the cover is awesome. I mean, that's, that's, if you watch my channel, you're not, probably not surprised, you know, that I love this fucking record cover. But, uh, yeah, everything else about it, you could just leave, just change these two words right there. I never would give a shit about this. I pulled this out actually because Chromie D um, brought it up in his uh, vinyl tag video about how um, it was a record that was spoiled by bad production. And I never thought the production job would be particularly bad on this record. So it probably just goes to show how discerning my taste relative is relative to his, which is to say much less discerning. So... But then he listens to all that glam shit that's really produced. So, like, when he ratchets it down from, like, what sounds mainstream, he probably doesn't have to go as far as I do either. You know what I mean? I'm just making fun. Yeah, actually, there was one record here I was recommending to Chromie. Let me see if I still have it here, but I think I put it away. No, it was that conspiracy record, though. Because it's kind of lame. So I thought he might like it. My friend Zoro asked her for a minute, though. And Chromium actually has good taste. I'm just fucking around. If you, like, watch his videos, it's Chromium Dioxide Radio, also known as Chromie D. If, um, yeah, you won't regret it if you go look at his shit. If you go and watch his videos and you don't like them, there's something wrong with you. It's just too fucking funny. Like, I can get why someone might not like Bobby Gass's channel. But if you don't like chromium dioxide, there's something fucking wrong with you. You know? Alright. Yeah, here, I'll show this one again. Yeah, this is fucking fine, man. I'm really stoked about this one. Like I said, they pretty much blind bought it. It's on the list, it was cheap, right? So I did the thing where I like... You see what I mean with the vocals? In a way, like, the style is almost, um... It's like, it's, um... A death, uh, range... With a black coloring. If that makes sense. You know what I mean? As far as the vocals? Listen to this, TV. Because it probably sounds like I'm full of shit, but here, tell me. I think it makes sense. So now he shuts up. Oh well. I don't know if you can hear it through the thing. Anyway. 
So here's another one. This is more of an epic metal one. And this is actually a record of sort of, you know, questionable uh, legitimacy as far as the pressing goes. This, this, this is some record that came out like way fucking late, like 93 or something like that. Like way too late for what it is. Because what it is, is a record with a fucking kind of poorly drawn, but kind of awesomely drawn guy holding a sword. You know, like that's pretty much what it sounds like, you know? It's not, if you were like perfectly styled and brushed and like the art were tremendous, like, you know, <laughs> like, um, who's that guy who did the sculpture for uh, uh, Arno Baker? <laughs> yeah, the, the Nazi guy. If it looks like that, then that's too good. I don't really give a shit about that. But if it's drawn to write about that level of quality, that's exactly what I want in a fucking epic metal record. Look at this logo. And they're from Alaska. Which is also great. You know what's funny too is they're from Wasilla. It seems like everything is... Anytime you see something interesting come out of Alaska, it comes from Wasilla, you know. I'm probably just full of shit on that one, but whatever. Anyway, um, this thing is awesome. And in a way it's not. In a way it's really ordinary. But, uh, like, you just gotta dig it, you know. <laughs> this is kind of one of those, so. Glad to have turned one up because they only pressed a few of these and uh yeah, like I said, uh, how its legitimacy is questionable. Although, you know, the whole, like, legitimacy game is bullshit anyway. Like, I complain about Discogs from time to time and what they call unofficial. And the unofficial being, like, the scarlet letter for fucking um, not being able to sell it on there, which is a pain in the ass if you're trying to find something that doesn't, you know. Well, anyway... The reason that's such bullshit, though, is because it always depends on who you ask. I mean, in most cases, there's probably going to be, like, a rights holder. You know, like, uh, let's say some sort of legal entity that actually has the rights. And I'm sorry if y'all... There are probably people watching this who know way more about this stuff than I do. But in case you don't know anything about it... In a lot of cases, though, there really isn't. And I've heard more than one story about, like, someone... Uh, Someone who wanted to do a reissue of a record got in touch with the, did their best to get in touch with the band. So they got in touch with a member of the band who said, yeah, go ahead and do it. That's cool. Put it out. You know what I mean? Then some other member of the band will find out about it later and go out and start saying, oh, that record's not official. You know what I mean? I didn't sanction that. That's a bootleg. You know what I mean? And then it just sort of magically goes from being an official to an unofficial. This happened with a couple of Void releases actually too. Uh, Void Records. I've seen that with at least one or two, one or two of his. Uh, you know, the label that I've hyped in here. And that dude really does his best to make sure that these things are legit, that he's reissuing. You know what I mean? I uh, Just from having dealt with him personally in that, this guy, he, he's really, he's a straight arrow. You know what I mean? He's trying to do right by the bands. So if he goes and does a record, and then all of a sudden that gets called unofficial, then, you know, well... It's just fucking hopeless then. You know, it's arbitrary. So sometimes I look at these records and I'm like, yeah, this is definitely a counterfeit. This one, probably, but, I, you know, it could be one of those weird stories too. You know, it's, it's said to be unofficial, but what does that mean now? Yeah, I feel like I barely talk about records this video. I'm just like telling stories and shit, but it's kind of been a while and I don't have anything to talk about anyway. Although, I'm going to do the, uh, take this as encouragement, if uh, you're so inclined. Uh, I am going to do that uh, challenge that Merciful Metal did. I just didn't get my shit together and pull the records. Um, yeah, he did, uh, it's not really a contest, it's more sort of a topic. Actually, it might be a contest, I don't know. Anyway, fuck it. Um, the challenge is to pull a record by, um, from each, from as many countries as you can out of your collection, right? So he had, so like you pull like one from the U.S. and one from the U.K. and one from Germany and one from Italy and you know one from France and and see how many countries you can come up with. So it's kind of awesome. And you know that challenge is kind of made for people like me who geek out over that shit or Versible Metal for that matter. But y'all are gonna find more shit in your collection than you think. I'll bet. Beastmaker is awesome. Just fucking look at that cover and tell me it is gonna be great. Yeah, that's pretty much what it sounds like. So, not as sort of dark and doomy as this. Is this awesome, though? 
There's probably going to be an ad on this video too for that. So, whatever though. I'm not making any money off it, I'll tell you that. Um, yeah, well shit, this video is long enough. This is a really cool record. Um, I feel like I say this all the time, but the songs are just really good. You know what I mean? They're catchy. When the side of the record, when each side of the record ends, the so the last song on there stays in your head, and you kind of keep singing it to yourself until you get up and either flip the record or put something else on. That's as far as I'm concerned. That's good for like the arc on a record. You know what I mean? If you put it together that way, you've done something right. Anyway, it's really good. More sort of metal than doom, but plenty doomy for my taste. All right. Um, I'm looking for anything else that might cry out, you know. Oh, yeah, fucking, I don't remember what it now. I was going to show this, because someone was talking about prong recently. I think it was bananas, actually. But, uh, yeah, this is the first one. This is Primitive Origins. And uh, it's on Spigot Records. So, yeah, I just have really, a couple of the really early prong records. I've heard they changed, too, actually. Uh, not like COC, but uh, maybe I should check out some of their later stuff that I missed back in the day. One more peek here. Yeah, I think we're talking about enough shit. Oh, no. Fucking there was one other one I wanted to hide. Okay, I knew I was forgetting one more. Admiral Sir Cloudsley Shovel. It's another one I've had for probably six years. Kind of bought by accident.